Guys, almost every resource we offer, we talk and emphasize breath. And that's because breath is the foundation of movement. The sooner you realize that, the sooner you'll feel better, the sooner you'll perform better. So we wanna make sure to go over a few different breathing types um, or breaths that we recommend and that we incorporate within our training. So there's a vast, endless supply of resources on breathing, but this is a quick little resource, educational, to give you an idea of what we emphasize within our training program. And those three different breaths include relaxed breath, breathing behind the shield, and power breathing. All three of them are important. All three of them we use within almost every training session. And all three of them you should incorporate. So the sooner you know this, the better. So let's kick this off and let's start with relaxed breath. I want you to find a space, and it doesn't matter what position you're in necessarily, but find a space. I'm just gonna be in a corpse pose. And I want you to relax. Let the tension go and just start belly breathing. The cues that we like to use are to inhale and exhale through the nose. Keep the tongue on the top of the roof of your mouth. Pull the air into your pelvic floor. Keep those eyeballs open. You might even shoot for roughly a three second inhale and a five second exhale. and just try to calm your body. If your toes are straight up and down, your glutes are probably not relaxed. Relax your glutes, your toes will probably flop to the side. Let all that neck tension go and just feel super heavy into the ground. You might end up staying there for 30 seconds, a minute, longer. But it's all good. And it gets your muscles relaxed. And that's the key to movement. That is relaxed breath. An example of like breath gone awry could be swimming. If you're in the middle of a lake and you are swimming and your breath is off, your body subconsciously starts to tense up and it does not help performance. There's anxiety. It just, it just, it, you know, and in the water it's compounded because you're dealing with potentially a life and death situation. But if you're not breathing well, the muscles are not behaving. They're creating, there's tension, there's anxiety. Uh, anxiousness and, and, and the body doesn't perform well. So relaxed breath is really super important. We generally start most of our sessions with relaxed breath. It gets everything kind of in line with the way that it should operate. So that's the first one that we'll cover. And whenever you need a time out, whenever you're moving, whenever you want to try to calm the body down, just try to think of those types of, you know, cues, the belly breathing, the relaxed breath, just calming your body down. And communication with our body happens through breath. So our body communicates to us typically with pain or feel good, right? There, there's, there's something wrong. And we can communicate back through breath. If our breath is off, something's wrong and the body's going to kind of um, tense up. Um, so that's your first breath. The second breath is probably the most common breath that you'll see within this type of environment, and that's breathing behind the shield. And that's all strong first uh, philosophy from Pavel Tuchlin 
And so breathing behind the shield just means that there's appropriate stability for the activity and then there's breath behind it. So for instance, if you're planking or if you're squatting or if you're doing a rowing movement, I mean, whatever you're doing, majority of the exercises that, again, that, that are taking place in an environment uh, like this, there's going to be appropriate stability of your core and then there's breath that's, that's behind it. So um, again, could be, could be a plank, Right, you've got stability of your core. So I'm feeling that stability and then I'm breathing behind that. And the, the intensity is obviously gonna depend upon the movement, it's gonna depend upon the load, uh, but continuing that breath with appropriate stability is called breathing behind the shield. Um, so you'd wanna master that, you wanna master working at different intensities with that stability. So there's stiffness, there's neutral spine, and, and there's breath that supports everything. So you can, you know, so you can move, you can perform. So whether that's in the strength realm or whether it's in conditioning, running, all that type of stuff, uh, breathing behind that shield is really important. The last breath, that you should master when it comes to performance breathing is power breathing or power breath. We try to emphasize a power breath when you want to elicit maximal you know, uh, explosiveness or maximal strength. Uh, those types of things are done when you are deadlifting, uh, heavy loads, when you are swinging, when you're snatching, when you're doing things that, that you need optimal stability for. So no longer uh, are we in obviously relaxed breath, no longer are we in that breathing behind the shield, but now we're asking the body to perform at the, the top, at the top range of our capability. And a power breath is gonna keep you safe. It's also gonna help you perform at a higher level. It's gonna make you stronger. It's gonna create more stability. It's gonna make you more powerful. So. Uh, if again, if, if you are doing a heavy deadlift, incorporating that power breath will make you stronger. It'll keep you more injury resilient. And the power breath, uh, the best way I could probably describe a power breath is to give you like, uh, to, to, to follow along with me here, but to give you like an example, uh, between a flat tire and an air compressor. So if your core is a flat tire, just kind of give me that flat tire XL, right? Flat tire, XL, there's not much air coming out of there. Now, pretend like your torso, your core is an air compressor. It's filled with as much air in there as it can get. And then it, you, just, you just have a teeny little bit of air coming out of that part that you actually like fill up tires and stuff with. It comes out like So you press that hard core, as much air as possible building up and then just let a little air out. So that, that air compressor power breath obviously feels a little bit more stable than the relaxed breath or the flat tire breath. And if you're trying to swing explosively, if you're trying to snatch explosively, if you're trying to elicit uh, as much strength as you've got, you definitely want to incorporate power breath. And it's something that takes practice. It's not gonna feel comfortable. It's not gonna sound cool necessarily, uh, but we don't care. We want things that are effective. We want things that are safe. And so incorporating that power breath is gonna be really helpful. You can watch the five secrets to instant strength where we kind of go over the specific uh, power breathing with, with deadlifting, that's pretty cool. Uh, but again, just imagine really anything, maybe even a press, right? You're, you're, you're in a press position, everything's engaged, chest is proud, crushing that bell, little inhale, and you're exhaling with that power breath. So during the power breath, there might actually be with some exercises like a deadlift, a slight pause that elicits that maximal strength and then that exhale. So, I hope that's helpful. 
Uh, you typically want to exhale on exertion. Uh, that's a recommendation that we would make. Sometimes we're just going to tell you, hey, listen, we don't even care. Just, just breathe. But for those of you who are at higher levels of performance, you know, exhaling on exertion, you know, on a swing, is going to, going to flow with your biomechanics uh, better. So I hope that's helpful. Three different breaths, relaxed breath, breathing behind the shield, and power breathing in order to look great, feel great, and perform your best. So thanks for watching. These performance breathing techniques, we use them all the time.